Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video and welcome to my October wrap up. Today I'm going to be telling you about everything that I've read in the month of October. So October for me is always Victober or Victorian October. If you are new to this channel and you don't know what Victober is, then I will link the announcement videos down below for this year. But Victober is a readathon that I run every year with a bunch of other booktubers, which is all about reading Victorian literature in the month of October. So in the Victober this year, I read eight Victorian novels, two Victorian epic poems, one Victorian full short story collection, and 16 other short stories from various collections. So I'm pretty pleased with what I read in Victober and let me get into into the books. So I'll start off with the novels and let me start off with the two books that were rereads for me this month. Um, so I reread The Mayor of Casterbridge by Thomas Hardy, which was our group reader for the month, our read along. Um, and I really, really enjoyed rereading The Mayor of Casterbridge and um, reading on the Goodreads group kind of what other people were feeling about The Mayor of Casterbridge as they read it. I really love Thomas Hardy. He's one of my favourite authors. Um, and this is, I think, the third time I've read The Mayor of Casterbridge and I really enjoyed it. So The Mayor of Casterbridge tells a story of a man called Michael Henchard who um, has a lot of flaws and in the first chapter he gets very drunk at a country fair and sells his wife and daughter um, and then many many years later he has kind of changed his ways become a better man he's become the mayor of Casterbridge when the wife he sold many years ago comes back into his life and everything goes on from there I really love the mayor of Casterbridge very much I think it is tragic and powerful and thought-provoking and beautifully written and I feel like Thomas Hardy is wonderful at writing very flawed people who you feel a lot of sympathy for, even if you really dislike them. Like, I feel like I don't really like any of the characters in The Mayor of Casterbridge. Um, maybe I slightly like Elizabeth Jane, but even then, I don't feel like I love Elizabeth Jane as I do with the characters from other Victorian novels that I really love. But there's something about the way he writes his characters where I feel for them so much. And I feel like he's very good at kind of creating very psychologically real people in just a fantastic way. So I highly recommend The Mayor of Casterbridge. I'm really glad to have reread it. Then the other Victorian book I reread this month was The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins. Um, I listened to both this and The Mayor of Casterbridge on audiobook actually, and I really, really love this. So I first read The Moonstone as a teenager when I was, I don't know, maybe 14, 15, and I hadn't read it since then. So it was really nice to come back to it um, after I guess 14 or 15 years um, and I really really enjoyed it. It's a really compelling Victorian sensation novel um, which all centres around the disappearance of a diamond called the Moonstone. The novel is told from the perspective of various different characters all of whom are kind of associated in some way with the disappearance of this diamond and we begin um, in the first person perspective of a man called Gabriel Betteridge who is the steward at a big country house um, where the diamond is going to be presented as a birthday present to um, the young mistress of the house. I really love the Moonstone a lot. Um, I think it is my favourite Wilkie Collins and I will link down below a video I made earlier this month all about Wilkie Collins and my kind of um, hit and miss relationship with his books. But I really think The Moonstone is fantastic. It's really pacey. It's really engaging. The way Wilkie Collins uses different narrative perspectives in this is fantastic. I love so many of the characters in here. Gabriel Betteridge, Sergeant Cruff, Ezra Jennings. I feel like it has some of his most interesting characters as well as just being a really fantastic story. I also feel like this novel contains within it a sort of critique of imperialism and colonialism which is really interesting. It's not always um, hugely successful. Wilkie Collins was obviously writing this a long time ago but if you're interested in that topic then The Moonstone is worth a read because it is something that Wilkie Collins is trying to kind of explore and critique in The Moonstone. Overall I really really enjoy rereading this and yeah I think it probably is my favourite Wilkie Collins book. From an excellent Wilkie Collins to a less excellent Wilkie Collins this month I also read Hide and Seek by him which I didn't enjoy quite as much. So Hide and Seek focuses on various different characters. At the beginning we're chiefly focusing on a young man called Zach who is quite like um sort of dissolute. He sort of means well but he's got into lots of scrapes and is hanging out of the wrong crowd. He has a friendship with an older man who is a painter called Valentine Blythe and Valentine lives with his wife and his adopted daughter Madonna. Madonna is a young woman who is deaf um, who Valentine adopted um, I think sort of 12 years before the narrative begins um, and there is some mystery surrounding her birth and so the novel kind of focuses around the mystery surrounding her birth and there's a new character who comes in sort of at the midway point um, who may or may not have something to do with Madonna's past and everything kind of goes on from there. I think 
there were a few problems that I had with Hide and Seek. There were some things about it that I liked. Um, I just really love Wilkie Collins' writing style, so it was kind of enjoyable to read up until towards the end. Um, and in general, there were some things that I really liked about it. You know, I think the characterization was quite interesting, um, and I think kind of Valentine and his family were quite interesting to read about. But the pacing, I feel, is very off in this novel. The novel doesn't really get going until halfway through, um, and even then, there's not actually like that much action and mystery and peril in this in the way that I feel like I expected Wilkie Collins but also I feel like his writing expects it like he's writing like there's a big mystery and a big peril and actually there just wasn't that much of it in Hide and Seek. There was also one other like plot point um, revelation thing towards the end that I just didn't really like um, and that kind of annoyed me too so I don't feel very positively about Hide and Seek which is a shame after having just finished The Moonstone immediately before I read this and feeling very positively about Wilkie Collins but that's okay he's a very hit or whistle author for me that's fine I'm going to continue reading his work because I do think there are some absolute gems in there but not all of them are for me another novel I read this month was The Semi-Attached Couple by Emily Eden I listened to this one audiobook too and this is a book that I really enjoyed so this um, tells the story of a young woman who at the beginning of the novel gets married she's 18 years old and she gets married to a man who is very in love with her and she is a bit in love with him and the husband soon begins to realise that he loves her more than she loves him um, and it kind of drives a wedge between them and the novel is basically about their marriage and the divisions and complications within their marriage as well as kind of the various friendships and romances and familial relationships going on between all of their friends. There were a lot of things I really liked about the semi-attached couple. I feel like the way it looks at marriage is fascinating especially at like how young Helen is and how harder that kind of makes everything um, and how she just isn't that emotionally mature like I feel like that was quite interestingly explored um, and I also feel like some of the characterization was fantastic both of the two kind of central characters the semi-attached couple um, but also Lady Portmore who I kind of hated was fantastically drawn and some of the other minor characters were really well done as well. The one thing I will say though about the semi-attached couple is that I just I just wish it had been twice the length. I feel like it had a lot of characters for the length that it was um, and I kind of just wanted it to be longer. Actually the semi-attached couple really reminded me of an Anthony Trollope book in that it's got like you know a really interesting exploration of marriage and a big kind of country house party um, and election and it's kind of focused on the upper classes like it really reminded me of quite a lot of Anthony Trollope novels but it's so much shorter and briefer than when Anthony Trollope writes about those same kind of subjects and I kind of just wanted it to be twice the length and for us to just spend even more time with all of these characters because I found them all really really interesting um, but I feel like especially some of the minor characters we just didn't spend quite enough time with so I really really liked it um, and I liked it more than the semi-detached house which is the other book by Emily Eden that I've read but I do wish it had been a little bit longer. Also in Victober I read Marion Withers by Geraldine Dewsbury. This was a really interesting novel I'm still kind of like gathering my thoughts together on this one. So this is the third book I've read by Geraldine Dewsbury. Previously I have read The Half Sisters and Zoe. The Half Sisters is one of my favourite books of all time and Zoe I quite liked but I didn't love. Um, I feel like Marion Withers is a stronger book than Zoe but it still falls like quite far below The Half Sisters for me. Um, I did like a lot of things about it but I just it just doesn't really compare to The Half Sisters and that slightly makes me sad because I feel like I feel like I've now read three books by Gerald D. Dewsbury and one of them is brilliant and two of them are quite good. Um, and maybe I just need to read more by her. I don't know, but yes. Anyway, there are a lot of things that I did like about it. I did find it a really interesting novel. It tells the story of a young woman called Marion Withers. She is the daughter of a manufacturer who owns a factory kind of outside Manchester. Um, and he has had a very kind of complicated life. He's a self-made man. He sort of began his childhood as a beggar on the streets, um, but he has a kind of genius for inventions. And by inventing various different kind of um, labor saving bits of machinery he's managed to um, kind of rise to the top of his field and he now owns a factory and we're basically following Marion's life um, her relationship with her father and also Marion's relationship with various other characters that she meets when a school friend invites her to go and stay in um, her house and um, so she goes to stay with the school friend and there she meets various different characters including a young man called Albert who she takes a fancy to uh, 
um, but who in his turn has taken a fancy to a married woman who is also staying on a visit to the house. Um, and meanwhile, there's another character called Mr. Cunningham um, who's kind of interested in Marion's father's mills who kind of comes into their lives as well. So I feel like there was a lot that I really liked about Marion Withers. It was a really interesting novel. I liked Marianne as a character and I found her quite interesting to look at. She reminded me actually a little bit of Elizabeth Jane from The Mayor of Costbridge where I liked her and I found her interesting but I kind of didn't love her. I think my favourite character was probably Lady Wollaston who I found really really interesting and I found her also quite interesting to look at in comparison to a very different but also slightly similar character from the half-sisters called Alice. So I was kind of thinking about that a lot as I was reading, which was quite interesting. And then I really liked Lady Williston and I quite liked her arc. I thought that was quite interesting. I thought a lot of the kind of like more minor characters were really fascinating. Like I feel like Geraldine Dewsbury is really fantastic at characterization. I haven't decided how I feel about Mr. Cunningham. Um, I felt like he was quite patronizing to everyone in some ways which I found slightly frustrating but also he did kind of say some really interesting things so I feel like he was sort of being used by Geraldine Dewsbury um, to kind of get across some of her sort of philosophy of life I suppose um, so I think that's maybe why he came across as a bit like didactic at times um, but I did still find him quite an interesting character I just can't decide if I like him. I think my main thought about Marion Withers is that it felt a bit unfocused like I feel like it couldn't decide whether it wanted to be an industrial novel or not because some of the novel feels like it's very focused on kind of industry and Manchester and the mills and kind of the plight of the working classes and how um, the situation kind of needs to be changed there are several chapters which feel very focused on that but then there are other chapters where that feels very very far away and it's much more kind of a building's romance for Marianne um, of her kind of like discovering what she wants from life and kind of learning more about love but then at the same time as well as those two things we also have um kind of Albert falling in love with Lady Wollaston who's a married woman and their kind of like complicated dynamic and what that is saying about kind of like gender and social position and marriage so I just I really liked it but I feel like there was a lot going on and it couldn't decide what was the main thread and I think the other thing is that one of the reasons why I love the half sisters so much is that I feel like it's very proto-feminist and I feel like Marianne Withers is slightly less proto-feminist I don't know I feel like there were still some interesting things in here to do with gender especially to do with kind of women's education um, but I felt like this book as a whole felt a bit more like paternalistic whereas the half sisters felt a bit more individualistic um, and so I slightly got frustrated with the kind of paternalist stuff in here I don't know I did really really like it and I feel like the fact that I've spoken about this for ages tells you how much I'm thinking about it and um, I think it's a really interesting novel but yes I didn't love it quite as much as the half sisters then I also read A Noble Life by Dinah Mullet Craig Dinah Mullet Craig is another real favorite author of mine I've read three of her books um, Olive John Halifax Gentleman and A Noble Life. Olive is probably my favourite, but I think I probably like A Noble Life as much as John Halifax Gentleman. That is to say, I feel like John Halifax Gentleman might be a slightly better book, but there was something about A Noble Life that I really liked. I think it's partly just that I really like Dinah Muller Craig's writing style and I really like the way she writes about emotions and characters in a slightly like pulled back way. A Noble Life follows the life of the Earl of Caneforth, who is a Scottish Earl. We're following him right from his birth and through his childhood and his adulthood. The Earl of Caneforth is born with a disability. He is never able to walk. Um, he can just about hold a pen and write, but it's very, very painful. And he suffers from a lot of chronic pain throughout his life. And the novel basically looks at his life, um, his relationship with the people around him, especially his close friendship with Helen, a clergyman's daughter um, who lives nearby, and also kind of looks at his sort of social position as the Earl um, and how he kind of acts as the squire um, and kind of the, the landlord to all of the people who live around him and how he kind of tries to um, improve their lives. I really liked A Noble Life a lot. Um, it is a slightly slower Victorian novel, so it might not be for everyone. There's slightly less plot, um, but I feel like the character relationships in it are really interesting and the Earl of Painforth and Helen especially were really interesting characters. I did find that occasionally a board is slightly on the sentimental in a way that I didn't find with Olive or John Halifax Gentleman, which I think is partly because um, we're kind of slightly more 
removed from the characters in this one um, but I did overall really enjoy it um, and yeah I think Olive is still the best place to start with Dinah Miller Crake but I really liked this too and I want to carry on reading all of her work. Now on to my two favourite novels of October so here I have The Young Pretenders by Edith Henrietta Fowler. This is a children's book which was published in the 1890s and it's utterly delightful and um, this is a lovely edition from Persephone Classics which has in it the illustrations which I assume are original which are really nice as well. Um, so this is a story about um, a five-year-old Babs and her brother Teddy and they live in a big country house. Um, they've been looked after by their grandmother but their grandmother dies at the beginning of the book and so they're taken in by their uncle Charlie because their parents are abroad in India. And it all basically looks at Babs and Teddy, their games, and um, they're called the Young Pretenders because they like to um, create games where they're pretending to be other people. And the book is about their relationship with uncle Uncle Charlie and with their aunts um, and also them kind of like waiting for their parents to return to England. There was so much that I really liked about this. It was very, very funny. There are some bits of it which are just hilarious. Babs, as with many five-year-olds, always says the wrong thing and it's very, very entertaining. And I feel like her character feels both so real but also is like utterly endearing and very, very funny in a way that I really, really liked. But I feel like this novel strikes a really fantastic balance between being really fun and joyous, but also being quite somber at times. Uncle Charlie and Babs like form a really close friendship where he is you know her surrogate father and he loves her very much but he knows that she is waiting for her parents to come back from India and that when they come home to England he will not have that role in her life anymore and I feel like Uncle Charlie was a really interesting character and and there are some kind of like somber moments in relation to him that I thought were really well done so I really really liked The Young Pretenders I would highly highly recommend it. It's really really joyous but also like really thought-provoking too and yeah it was an utter Joy, so I'd highly highly recommend this one it was a fantastic book but my favorite thing of the month was The Three Clarks by Anthony Trollope which was just absolutely fantastic I love Anthony Trollope very very much he is one of my all-time favorite authors and this book was just wonderful one of my favorite Anthony Trollope's just fantastic I loved it so much so this tells a story of three clerks working in the civil service Harry is sort of like the well-behaved one and Charlie is very much not the well-behaved one and Alaric is somewhere in the middle where he sort of acts as though he's well behaved but actually maybe there's some more complicated darker messy stuff going on under the surface and the book is about these three clerks their friendships their work and also their connection with a family who live just outside of London who are Harry Norman's cousins but um Alaric and Charlie end up kind of getting to know them too and this family consists of a widow and three daughters and if you know anything about Victorian novels and the marriage plot you could imagine um that the three daughters and the three clerks are going to have have some interweaving romantic plots and it was just excellent it was just an utter joy in so many ways so there are many reasons why I love this book one just because it's Anthony Trollope and I love the way he writes and his characterization and his plotting like I just I just absolutely love his novels I just feel like I can always trust Anthony Trollope to give me like the ending I want um, which is something that is very nice because I feel like that's not the case in all Victorian novels and um, then another thing that I really loved about this book is that it's about the Victorian civil service and I actually find the Victorian civil service fascinating and I always have Anthony Trollope did himself work in the civil service within like the post office so um he was very familiar with the workings of the civil service and I feel like you can really tell this anyway Charlie um was probably my favorite character he also wants to be a writer and I feel like the bits about him kind of trying to get published and trying to make a career for himself as an author and his kind of hopes that that will help him become a better person I feel like that was all really interesting too and just in general like I feel like Anthony Trollope is so wonderful at creating characters who behave badly, have lots of flaws, do all the wrong things, but also you don't hate them, you just feel like they're letting themselves down and not living up to their true potential. And I feel like there are many characters in The Three Clarks that fit into that, and I feel like Anthony Trollope does it wonderfully. So I really thoroughly enjoyed this, just thought it was great, and yeah. What a joy. Love this very, very much. Moving on to some poetry. This month I also read two epic poems. Um, so the first one that I read was Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. Um, and I really enjoyed this. It's a really interesting um, buildings romance epic poem, uh, which tells the story of Aurora Lee from her childhood into her adulthood um, in the first person. And it's about Aurora Lee's kind of development, her moving from Italy where she's grown up to England, where her father is from, her kind of complicated feelings about marriage and individual and her um, 
drive to become a poet herself. There was a lot that I loved about Aurora Lee. Um, I feel like it was probably my third favourite thing of the month, actually, after um, The Three Clerks and The Young Pretenders. I thought this was fascinating and I enjoyed it a lot, actually. I'm not always one for epic poetry, but this was really fantastic. Like, there were some bits where it became a little bit tangential and rambly, but in general, it was really gripping and really interesting to read and I really liked Aurora as a character. I love the way this book looked at Aurora's career as a writer. I found that absolutely fascinating. The way that Elizabeth Barrett Browning writes about the position of women in this epic poem was fascinating and I feel like some of this book um, and the kind of way it looked at gender and um, womanhood I suppose was just fantastic and really really interesting and felt really ahead of its time however I was slightly disappointed with the ending in light of that. I feel like I wanted this epic poem to be slightly more proto-feminist than it was and it was still quite proto-feminist but um I feel like I wanted it to go one step further but you know I did still think it was really fantastic and that was a really really interesting aspect of it as well as being a building through a man and an epic poem it's also a kind of um social critique novel and it has a lot about it um, that is kind of critiquing society and social structures to do with marriage and class and gender in a way that I found really really interesting Elizabeth Barrett Browning's kind of aim in writing this was to write an epic poem about the Victorian period about the present day when she was writing because a lot of epic poetry tended to be historical and set in the past and um, like the next epic poem I'm going to talk about so I found it really interesting that this was her like really wanted to write about the time she lived in and um, so it's a really really fascinating book um, and yeah I would really highly recommend Aurora Lee I thought it was fantastic and even if I didn't love the ending completely I feel like I'm going to be thinking about it for a long time and I feel like I will settle down on loving it completely by the end the more I think about it Anyway, and the other epic poem that I read this month was The Ring and the Book by Robert Browning, who was the husband of Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And I did quite like this, but not nearly as much as Aurora Lee. I listened to this on audiobook, um, and this was a really interesting book in its premise. Basically, The Ring and the Book is all about a murder trial um, taking place in 17th century Italy. And we learn the kind of basic facts early on that a man murdered his wife and um, has confessed to the murder, but says that he was justified because because she had been adulterous. And basically in The Ring and the book, what we get is the perspectives of various people um, kind of saying what they think happened and what they think was right and wrong and what they think the truth was. So we hear from the husband who has killed his wife. We hear from the wife, like her dying words. We hear from the priest who um, the husband accused her of having an affair with. We hear from the Pope who's like judging the trial. We hear from like, general opinion within Rome and we hear from various other people who are involved in some way or another and the book the poem is basically about truth I suppose and the complexity of truth um, and how lots of different people can have different views on a situation and also how just because someone may be telling the truth that doesn't mean that what they have done is right and um, so I feel like it was a really really interesting book in its premise and what it was trying to do and what it was saying but it is quite long and it is a bit rambly and I do feel like there were whole sections which I just didn't get as much out of um, like I feel like there were sections which I thought were fantastic and brilliant and then there were other sections of like an hour of the audiobook where I just didn't get much out of it it is quite long-winded um, and I feel like Robert Browning could have achieved the same thing in about half the length. So it was an interesting read and I am glad I read it but yeah it was not an easy Victorian read, not a Victorian read for beginners. Um, if you're interested in trying some epic poetry, Aurora Lee is much more accessible. Moving on to the short stories. So I read one full short story collection this month which was Keynotes and Discords by George Edgerton which actually is two short story collections. I think they're originally published as Keynotes and discords and um, but now they're often published together and um, so this was a collection of short stories from the 1890s which I found really interesting I like some stories more than others as does often happen in short story collections I would say that um, virgin soil was my favorite story that was one from discords and that was my favorite story by quite a long way I think a lot of the other stories I found really interesting but I didn't necessarily like them all if that makes sense George Edgerton is kind of part of like the new woman movement and she writes a lot about gender and the position of women within society Society, and sometimes her stories have more manifesto than plot and narrative in them um, and sometimes 
she manages to combine the, the manifesto and the narrative fantastically, such as in a story like Virgin Soil, which I thought was fantastic. Um, but sometimes I feel like she doesn't blend the two things quite so well. So I would recommend Keynotes and Discords, um, but I think it's probably one to read if you're kind of interested in Victorian um, feminism and pro-feminism and the new women movement rather than um, like just a good read on its own if that makes sense. Then I also read 16 other Victorian short stories. I'm not gonna talk about all of these today um, because I did make a separate video. Um, I read all of these short stories in one day doing a kind of how many Victorian short stories can I read in one day kind of challenge. So I'll link the video vlog that I did of that down below and I won't go through them all here because there are quite a lot. Um, but I read three short stories from this Elizabeth Gaskell short story collection. I read two short stories by Lucy Clifford. I read a slightly longer short story by Dilemma Crake called A Governess's Tale. And I read um, quite a few short stories from an online short story archive, which I'll link down below. I'll also list all the short stories that I read down below. And then I also read quite a few short stories from this collection, which is Women who did stories by men and women 1890 to 1914. So I read some of the Victorian short stories in this and then I'm going to carry this on into November and read some of the non-Victorian short stories in this. Um, but I really am enjoying this collection a lot so far um, and I would really recommend it. In fact, I think my two favourite short stories that I read this month, well, in fact, my three favourite short stories that I read this month are in this collection, um, which are um, The Yellow Drawing Room by Mona Caird um, and An Imaginative Woman by Thomas Hardy and... Virgin Soil by George Edgerton, which also appears in this collection. So far, this is a really strong collection and one that I really recommend. And I'm really looking forward to finishing this off in November and reading the rest of the stories, especially because this, this is a collection of stories, which is basically about the kind of new woman movement at um, the turn of the 19th century into the 20th century, which is something I'm really interested in. So yes, I'm really enjoying this so far. And um, yeah. Those short stories in here that I've just mentioned were fantastic. Um, I feel like I should take a moment to talk about An Imaginative Woman by Thomas Hardy because it was such a wonderful short story and I feel like everyone who's interested in Thomas Hardy should read it but might not have heard of it. An Imaginative Woman um, tells the story of what happens when a woman and her husband move into new lodgings. And this woman um, is an aspiring poet and she discovers that a poet who she has heard of and admires has lived in the lodgings before her. And she kind of finds various things of his and starts to like fall in love with him without having ever met him. And it's basically about that and how that affects her life. And I just thought it was fantastic um, and just wonderful. And Thomas Hardy is the best. So you need to go and read An Imaginative Woman. So there we have it. That's what I read for Victober. I'm pretty pleased with what I read for Victober. There were, of course, several books on my TBR that I did not manage to get to, but that's fine. I think I read some really fantastic stuff this month, especially The Three Clarks, The Young Pretenders, Aurora Lee, and some of the short stories that I read. And I just had a really good reading month overall. So that is all for now. Please do let me know down in the comments. Did you take part in Victober? What did you read? What was your highlight of the month? That's all for now. And I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.